Hello friends. Today we are here to discuss about the writing of a new constitution and the debates related to it which are going on in the India right now. So for example there are the people there are some leaders as well who are proposing to write a new constitution in India and the need has arisen to write a new constitution in India. So now in this lecture I would like to discuss is it feasible or is it possible to write a new constitution for India in these days and I want to compare the favorable and unfavorable positions or oh sorry situations favorable and unfavorable situations compared to 1950 and 21st century. So let us begin our discussion. So that is new constitution for India. Is it possible? So that is the thing. So is it possible? So the debates are going on to propose a new constitution for India. Now we have to look, we have to see, is it really possible for the today's society or is it really necessary for the to today's society to draft a new constitution? We all know that our constitution has been drafted and adopted in 1950. From that day we are celebrating the 26th January as a Republic Day. So now in this occasion I would like to quote Mr. Uh, a famous jurist Fali S. Nariman. Fali S. Nariman a famous jurist once quoted in his lecture, lecture that a new constitution to India is not possible now. A new constitution to India is not possible now because he said that even the new ideas, the innovative ideas which came up after 1950s, he, how, even though they are sounding good, even though they are beautiful in the reports, e even though the ideas are brilliant, the writing of the new constitution, drafting of the new constitution is not possible. Why? Because because he mentioned he mentioned few elements which were present in 1950s or 1947 uh, for example uh, 40s oh yeah 1940s and 1950s few elements were present in 1940s and 50s which helped the drafting of the constitution for india and at the same time he mentioned few more elements which were added upon which were added upon in our political system and gain relevance in our political system which may create hindrances for writing a new constitution today okay so today now i want to compare the elements which are favorable in 1950 and i want to, i want to mention some more elements which are unfavorable to write the constitution today so let us see the these things like first the spirit of accommodation the spirit of accommodation and the second is the spirit of tolerance the spirit of tolerance the spirit of accommodation, the spirit of tolerance and the third is the spirit of persuasion. The spirit of persuasion. Okay. So, the spirit of accommodation, the spirit of tolerance and the spirit of persuasion. These three spirits helped the framing of the constitution in 1947 to 50 okay in that period we can see okay there was a clear spirit of accommodation and tolerance and persuasion in indian politics as a whole that is the reason why the situations in those days favored the drafting of a constitution 
okay and he also mentioned the folius nariman also mentioned few elements which have been added to today's political system which might be creating the hindrances so so these elements versus today's elements first one casteism second is nepotism nepotism and the third element is corruption so my dear friends you can see these three elements casteism nepotism corruption have been added to indian political system these three elements were gaining so much importance in in today's political system which makes the drafting of constitution impossible today that is the reason why mr nariman was saying in his lecture that drafting the constitution a new constitution to india today is not possible why because these three elements which helped the drafting of constitution were absent today and these three elements were present today indian political system is being dominated by these three elements that is the reason why we can also agree that new constitution for india is might be very difficult to draft now i want to add some more elements i want to add some more examples in particular okay to these elements okay so i want to add some more examples by which i can say that drafting of constitution a new constitution might be very difficult today for I means uh, the same uh, spirit of tolerance accommodation and the spirit of uh, persuasion were not exactly uh, present today and how i want to give some examples how those these three spirits helped the drafting of the constitution for example <clears throat> if we take dr b r ambedkar dr b r ambedkar the father of indian constitution once if you see how he got into the constituent assembly ambedkar's appointment as a ambedkar's appointment as the chairman of chairman of drafting committee we all know that the ambedkar was the chairman of drafting committee of indian constitution which was a very very important committee of indian constitution we all know that the indian constituent assembly has been was been elected in 1946 out of which the members were being divided into several committees and out of these committees you know the drafting committee was very very important committee because it is responsible to draft the total constitution it is not given a single subject it is responsible for to draft the total constitution and we all know that the ambedkar was the chairman of the drafting committee that is the reason why we call him the father of the indian constitution and uh, now interestingly interestingly mr granville ashton in his book that is the indian constitution cornerstone of a nation it is a book written by granville ashton indian constitution the cornerstone of a nation is a book written by granville ashton so in this book granville ashton clearly mentioned that ambedkar has been elected okay ambedkar has been elected to the constituent assembly ambedkar has been elected to the constituent assembly from bengal region from bengal province but after the partition we know that the constituent assembly was elected in 1946 partition in 1947 that is the reason why after the partition ambedkar lost is lost is membership in indian constituent assembly okay that means he is caught right so he he lost his seat from indian constituent assembly now as i said the spirit of accommodation 
the spirit of persuasion. Because of this, we all know that, see, even though now he is no more the member of Constituent Assembly, can you imagine the father of the Constitution lost his seat as a member of Constituent Assembly? Now, what to do? Okay, what to do? Now came the tolerance of the Congress party. Okay, we all know that the Indian National Congress is the leading political party in our freedom struggle and we all know that it enjoys clear majority in the constituent assembly it had the dom it the members the number of members were more from the indian national congress party but now congress party recognized the talent of ambedkar congress party recognized the importance of the presence of ambedkar in the constituent assembly dr b r ambedkar's presence in the constituent assembly was very important and this point has been recognized by the congress party of the day do remember even though the ambedkar is non congress member even though dr ambedkar criticized many times the Congress party's policies before independence, even after independence. Okay, even before this or even after this, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar criticized the Congress policies, Congress party's policies many, many times. He was not a congressman, but still Congress party preferred, preferred Ambedkar's presence in the Constituent Assembly. That is the reason why he was elected from the Bombay province again, replacing replacing a congressman okay replacing a congressman dr b r ambedkar has been elected to the constituent assembly and dr b r ambedkar we all know that he came to the constituent assembly to safeguard the rights of the scheduled castes but he came he, he said by himself that he came to the constituent assembly to safeguard the rights of the scheduled caste but we all know that he not only safeguarded the rights of the scheduled caste he safeguarded the rights of each and every indian he safeguarded the rights of each and every minority okay we india okay we india became a accommodative became a tolerant society our constitution is tolerant our constitution is framed such that it is a tolerant india becomes a tolerant society Okay, because of the tolerant nature of the constituent assembly members. Today, the con Indian, the total Indian society is designed such that it is all the religions, all the castes are being equally respected. So, the spirit of equality has been included in our constitution. Right. So, that is how that is how the spirit of tolerance that is how the accommodative nature of the congress party helped ambedkar's presence and he was made chairman of the drafting com committee so today if we see there is casteism there is party preference so we cannot find the other party member has been elected and made the chair chairman of the uh, drafting committee so it is a distance idea to think today and next coming point is the uh, healthy debates of the constant assembly So, in the debates of the Constituent Assembly, right. So, at that point of time, the Constituent Assembly used to, uh, okay. So, before that, I want to mention that almost the Constituent Assembly took uh, 2 years, 11 months, 18 days to complete the Constitution. So, in these 2 years, 18 months, 11 days, our constitutional assembly uh, constituent assembly members so took the constitution they read the constitutions all over the world they uh, they collected the information from all over the world about the constitutions of about how the important points which points to be included which points to be excluded so 
so almost they stitched together they stitched together the very important aspects of the world's constitutions they borrowed the uh, some of the aspects from different different constitutions and they uh, sat as the committees and they discussed the each and every point they debated over each and every point and finally they drafted a constitution and this drafted constitution is again debated in the total assembly so first of all each and every topic is de debated in com at committee level at panel level then again the drafted constitution has been debated at assembly level so all these debates whether at parliamentary committees level or whether at the panel level or whether at the assembly level or were very very healthy that means both at the so here i want to mention two things one time and the second is again uh, acceptance or tolerance accommodation again so tolerance and accommodation so first of all i want to mention about the time so these debates were means were given very very importance they never wasted the time of the constituent assembly that means if they if at all they wasted 5 minutes today they used to begin 5 minutes early the next day that means they given a lot of importance to these debates so they never wasted the time okay that was the commitment by the constituent assembly members at that point of time so today if we see there is a lot of wastage of time through ruckus or say processions or whatever the protest made by the uh, parliamentarians so the time of the parliament has being wasted today there were no healthy debates and the second point is tolerance and accommodation that means the opposition okay the opposition party members were being heard that means they were given equal opportunity to speak to criticize okay and all these means whether the suggestions by the opposition party whether it is like uh, criticism by the opposition party or whether so whatever the ideas by the opposition party were encouraged even though the congress party members are more i cannot say exactly opposition but okay we can use the word okay non congress parties okay so even though the members of congress party were in dominant okay in number but other party non congress members were also encouraged to participate in the debates their ideas were given equal importance their criticism was given equal importance so through this a healthy constitution has or uh, is took birth now for example today if we see the vice president himself was saying that the mps were not being uh, no the attendance of the parliamentarians is not up to the level it is very minimum almost uh, there was a statement that 18 out of 80 parliamentarians were uh, attending regularly for all the uh, parliamentary panel meetings that is at the committee level parliamentary standing committee level so there was lot of uh, non presence means uh, parliamentarians are being absent for the committee meetings so at that point of time you we never saw that okay so this healthy debates of the constituent assembly which we saw in 19 between 1947 to 1950 uh, we cannot see today we only see the ruckus disturbances protests in the parliament there were no healthy debates opposition was not being respected they were not even given time to criticize i'm um, not criticize not even discussion was there on the laws they are simply passed like that without even means walkouts are there so all these may create very uh, very like a, a strong barrier for the passage of a new constitution today okay and the third point which i want to add is uh, so the third point which i want to add is the constituent assembly members okay the constituent assembly members came out of the clutches of the colonial rule this is very very important okay the constituent assembly members came out of the so they came out of the clutches of colonial rule yeah this is very very important point 
very valid point why because in simple words i can say that a person without food know the real value of the food okay a person without money know the real value of money a person without say anything water a person who is who doesn't have water to drink know the real value of water so that's the reason so only a person so this is the human nature obviously so without when we don't have a thing we realize the importance of that thing yes now apply the same concept to this all the constituent assembly members whether from congress party or non congress party all of them fought against the british rule particularly congress party is a leading party in our freedom struggle so they fought against the britishers they know means they demanded some ideals they demanded some constitu they demanded some measures amendments in the laws prescribed by the british rule for example see they realize the importance of the fundamental rights because they know how important fundamental rights were because they don't have the fundamental rights at, in the british rule they don't have secularism in british rule they don't have an independent judiciary in the british rule they don't have true right to speech in british rule they don't have a right to press freedom of press was not there so under the british rule these constituent assembly members realized the importance of all these fundamental rights secularism democracy democracy was not there in the british rule only 10% people hardly 10% people uh, enjoys the voting right so now they realized the right out right to vote importance of right to vote so that is the reason why these constituent these constituent assembly members who were who came out of the clutches of colonial rulers know the real importance of the ideals like voting or say fundamental rights or say secularism or say democracy okay all the ideals in our constitution they are very very important today the today the leaders the parliamentarians may not realize may not know the importance of these particular rights because we already uh, been uh, enjoying these rights since we got independence okay so they did not en uh, they did not suffered in the so today's today's parliamentarians did not suffered under the british rule right so that is the reason why they may not realize the importance of the fundamental rights or freedom of press or any other ideals of the constitution so this is a very important valid point today what matters their own party matters than nation okay their caste matters than nation their family matters than nation that means the selflessness which we find in those leaders in the leaders of that day was not much present in the leaders of today okay why because as i said the nepotism means favoring towards their own kin and kith favoring towards their family their close friends the nepotism the casteism and the corruption is at higher levels when compared to 1950s 1940s okay so this is one more reason by which we can say that the framing of the constitution drafting of the constitution is not possible today and the next one let us see the ideology of the constitution see by when we open the constitution we see the preamble in the preamble itself we see so many ideas of our constitution for example okay now tell me uh, now let me know see this sovereign socialist secular democratic republic india so our constitution mentioned that india is a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic country okay and at the same time it also gave importance to the equality liberty fraternity justice in terms of political justice economic justice social justice so all these ideals are present in our constitution okay so these ideologies everyone means whether all the members of constituent assembly came to the consensus about these ideologies 
everyone whether it is congressman or non congressman other party socialist party or some other party or left party right party that doesn't matter but all the members came to the consensus that these ideals must be there in our constitution but today if we see the consensus or the agreement a common agreement between the parties is highly impossible because they prefer the ideologies of their parties rather than these strong ideologies some of the ideologies may get disturbed some of the ideologies may diluted may get diluted if the parties today's parties were given power to write the constitution okay and if you see socialist secular democratic all these so whether it is socialist secular democratic republic all these ideologies are equally given importance in our constitution there are several articles which will give importance and which prove that india is a secular country india is a democratic country india is respecting the equality liberty fraternity okay but today uh, the parties may not prefer so the parties may indirectly or directly dilute such ideologies so by which some sections may lose the voice in india some sections whether it is minorities whether it is weaker sections whether it is poor they may lose the voice which they enjoy today in our indian constitution right so the next very uh, fifth point and the last point which i want to mention is the unelected body unelected body that is the supreme court was given to was given the power to review the laws or to protect the laws this is again a very important point very very important point okay because the law making power is given to the elected body in india right and law executing power because as we follow the parliamentary system of government the law execution is done by the council of ministers who have been elected from the parliament itself who have been right the majority party rule is there because of the parliamentary system so if we see if we see the design if we see the design framed by the uh, framed by our constitutional framers in 1950 see how beautiful the design is the elected body the parliament will pass the laws and implemented by the council of ministers fine but a completely independent body that is completely independent of elections completely independent of the popular pressure completely independent of the politics parties elections that is supreme court supreme court is independent of all these elections parties politics popular pressures so this body is made the protector of law the protector of constitution and it has given power to review the laws and power to interpret the laws so by which see if you given the power to frame uh, if you if, uh, imagine today we are going to write a new constitution all the political leaders themselves wanted to be the judges true political leaders will not give this power to judiciary directly or indirectly they will retain some power from the judiciary and keep with themselves okay the independent judiciary may not might be difficult if we start writing a new constitution okay yes yes it is true because i'll tell you one example where there is a 32nd constitutional amendment 1973 okay this this amendment added a class 5 to article 371d article 371d deals with the special powers of andhra pradesh so this article 371d to this article a class 5 fifth class class was added one more point was added where it is mentioned that the verdict of the administrative tribunal over the service matters okay we all know that the administrative tribunals deals with the service matters so this verdict of the administrative tribunals can be overruled can be modified can be cancelled by the government 
where the government is one party. That means in the administrative tribunal, on one side, government is the party. That means, right, the, the case is between individuals and the government and the government is given to overrule the verdict, power to overrule the verdict. How illogical this is. So, try to understand this point. Through the 32nd Constitutional Amendment Act of 1973, okay, the administrative tribunal's judgment can be modified by the government, where the government is one of the party of the case. It is against the principles of natural justice. It is against the principles of natural justice, very unfair. Fortunately, in 1986, in 1986, P. Sambamurthy, P. Sambamurthy versus State of AP case, Supreme Court nullified this amendment. Okay, Supreme Court nullified this fifth provision, a class five provision of three, Article 371D. Fortunately, right? So that is how the political leaders attempted to grab the power of the judiciary. You know, administrative tribunal is a replacement for the high court. Okay, it has it functions the same as high court. So the executive wanted to grab the power of the judiciary. Right. So if you give power now to write a new constitution, doesn't the political leaders use that power? to modify the power, to take the powers of the judiciary? Won't they decrease the power of the judiciary? Won't they, won't they increase the power for themselves? So then the ideology of separation of powers will be disturbed. The ideology of separation of powers will be disturbed. Right? So, this is how, okay, so people are talking about the new constitution. Why? They are saying that center is being suppressing, center is suppressing the powers of the state. That is the reason why we need a new constitution. So, there are debates like that, arguments like that. Center is suppressing the powers. Yes, it is true. In some cases, it is true. We have to agree that center is suppressing the powers of state. Okay, uh, actually let us see why, so let us see some more uh, points here. So let us see, first one, why we need a strong center, why the strong center was preferred by our constitutional framers? This is the first question I want to answer. Why a strong center was preferred in 1950 by our constitutional framers? First, because as we all know, India is a nation. India was a nation in making. Even today, there are some of the uh, obstacles for Indian nation. But still, okay, coming to 1950, there are some of the challenges for Indian nation. One challenge was partition. Second challenge was, so one was partition, second princely states and third socio-economic backwardness, so absolute poverty. So these three elements, because of these three elements, these three elements are almost challenges, a great challenges for Indian nation. So, in order to tackle these three elements, these three challenges, that is challenge of partition, challenge of princely states, so to integrate the princely states into the country and also for the socio-economic development of the weaker sections in the country. So, because of these three factors, majorly because of these three factors, strong center is preferred. Okay. Of course, today we don't have the problem of partition, we don't have the problem of princely states, but still we have uh, the problem of socio-economic backwardness, but of course not up to the level of the 1950s, but still we are having the problem of socio-economic backwardness, unemployment, poor, uh, uh, weaker sections, 
so still they are suffering so i can say that this problem still persists but our partition and princely state challenges have been overcome now <clears throat> But the socio-economic backwardness today, when compared to today and in those days, it was much higher in those days. So, these are the three factors and challenges by which a strong center is preferred okay, over a, a true federal, a true federal, complete federalism. So we know that India is a quasi-federal country. Instead of a complete federation, constitution preferred a semi-federation of course we all know that the word federation is not used in the constitution right never the word federation is not used in anywhere in the constitution only union of states has been mentioned in the constitution so and at the same time they the constitutional framers expected a cooperative federalism they expected the cooperative federalism so they expected a cooperation between the state governments and the central governments state assemblies and the, and the parliament that is the reason why they preferred a strong center yes so there might may be some logical reasons behind making the centers more stronger but because of this because of this there are instances where the central government misused the power given to it the central government misused the power given to it for example two instances i can say this uh, like sr bombay case i can quote sr bombay case and recently the national capital territory delhi versus union of india 2018 case this is versus union of india or in this is in 1973 or which year it is in 1994 right yeah 1994 sr bomai case So, these two cases, these are only few examples because we all know that the president rule has been misused in uh, India, many instances. So, these two verdicts wherein the Supreme Court came forward to protect the states from the suppression of the center. So, in SR Bomai case, Supreme Court stated that the arbitrary powers enjoyed by the president in applying the president rule must be limited and at the same time he said that the president rule okay the decision by the president to impose a president rule decision by the central government to impose a president rule comes under the judicial review okay it comes under the judicial review and at the same time he said that proclamation of the president rule must have the support of the parliament that means it, the proclamation has to be approved by the parliament within two months. So, all these, this verdict modified some of the points in the constitution. That means, so it avoided, this verdict is a very historical verdict. It avoided the misuse of the president rule by the central government. Because the central government misused the pres president rule power, the power given to it. Okay. So, in this verdict, through this verdict, Supreme Court, uh, to some extent, limited the power of the central government in imposing the president rule. A very historical verdict. And the second one, see, uh, recently in 2018, there was a clash between the government of Delhi and the government of India, union government, central government and the state government, local state government, wherein uh, regarding the powers of the left-hand governor of Delhi. And finally, Supreme Court declared that the left-hand governor of Delhi must act on aid and advice of the Delhi Chief Minister aided by the sorry Delhi Council of Ministers headed by the Chief Minister. So the aid and advice okay the Lieutenant Governor of the Delhi must act shall act according to the aid and advice of the Council of Ministers headed by the Chief Minister of Delhi right. So except in three cases land 
पोलिस पब्लिक ऑर्डर दीज थ्री सब्जेक्ट्स वर इन द हैंड्स ऑफ सेंट्रल ओनली वेन कंपेर टू द एन सी टी ओके सो दट इज हाउ देर वर क्लैशेस बिटवीन सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट देर वर केसेस वे सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट डॉमिनेटेड द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स थ्रू बाई इंपोजिंग द गवर्नर रूल ओके पर्टिकुलरली इफ सपोज द इन सेंटर वन पार्टी इज रूलिंग एंड इन स्टेट्स अदर पार्टीज आर रूलिंग दे विल ट्राई टू इम्पोज द प्रेजिडेंट रूल वी ऑल नो वॉट हैपन इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी सेवन एंड वॉट हैपन इन नाइनटीन एटी वेन जनता गवर्नमेंट वेन जनता गवर्नमेंट केम टू द पवर इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी सेवन दे इमीडिएटली रिमूव ऑल द कांग्रेस पार्टी गवर्नमेंट्स इन द स्टेट्स दट वॉज सेम रिपीटेड बाई इंदिरा गांधी इन नाइनटीन एटी शी रिमूव ऑल नॉन कांग्रेस गवर्नमेंट्स इन द स्टेट्स बाई इंपोजिंग द प्रेजिडेंट रूल so such unfair such unfair actions were being taken by the central government over the state government as uh, these are like side effects of the strong center but however by quoting this as a reason that means the center is suppressing the power of the states by quoting this as the only reason we cannot say that we need a new constitution because the constitution provided okay constitution provided some protections to the state as well for example so instead of going for a new constitution we all know that our constitution can be amended that is very first point okay constitutional amendments <coughs> excuse me so <clears throat> so we can do the constitutional amendments so wherever the provisions are like exploitative nature wherever the center is exploiting the such provisions like president rule so similar to verdict of sr bombay so similarly we can like state governments or say state people or the people in general people of india can force for the constitutional amendments can ask for the constitutional amendments for the better protection of the state governments and the second one <coughs> so first is the constitutional amendment and the second is nowadays we see strong regional parties in many states we see strong regional parties so these regional parties if suppose people of india wants a new constitution or people of india feel that uh, sorry people of india feel that they want a more stronger states rather than strong center they will vote for the regional parties regional parties may fight through the their presence in the parliament they can go for the constitutional amendments wherein the power of center can be reduced and the power of states can be increased right so this is a one more solution and the third article 131 is always present for us savior of the states from the clutches of center so article 31 131 deals with the power of supreme court if suppose there, there arises any conflict between two states or state and center okay they can approach the supreme court similarly what happened just now i discussed two cases sr bombay case and national capital territory of delhi government versus union of india these two cases are the examples of how article 131 was utilized okay to protect the rights of the states so by seeing all these so there are so by seeing all these we can say that it is not suggestible and it is very very highly possible sorry very very highly impossible that drafting of the con new constitution in india might be a distant dream and and at the same time it is not favorable as well because today if you keep writing the constitution as i said there are several obstacles so today's political society doesn't have the spirit of tolerance doesn't have spirit of persuasion and spirit of accommodation and in addition to that it has uh, means the role of casteism nepotism corruption has been increased okay parties 
where uh, the selflessness in the leaders is absent. So there are many factors by which we can say that writing, drafting of a new constitution is not at all possible and not at all suggestible and the conditions are not favorable for a new constitution. And at the same time, we can say that the reasons, whatever the debates in the debates, that is, center is dominating the states or any other particular reasons can be tackled by the other methods, alternate methods, not by going for a new constitution, alternate methods like for example, constitutional amendments, regional uh, parties, selecting the regional parties, selecting the regional parties and sending them in a great number to the parliament so, then, so that they can do the amendment to the constitution, required amendments to the constitution to decrease some powers of the center and to increase the power of states. So, there are many options open for us. Article 131 is always present. Supreme Court always acts as a savior of the states, uh, state governments from the classes of the central government. Several times it questioned the central government uh, regarding president rules, regarding the appointment of the governors. Okay. So we already saw the means uh, uh, there are recommendations by the several committees like Punchi Commission, Sarkaria Commission uh, regarding the governor's office, regarding the uh, center state relations. So all these are there and uh, so we can tackle the problem by some other method rather than going for a new constitution. Thank you.